What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about probability calibration and calibrated classifiers. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn about probability calibration and calibrated classifiers in this video today. Now, one thing up front, please excuse my voice. I'm still having a cold and it's going to sound a little bit different than usual. And you might hear an occasional voice crack here and there. I hope you can live with that. So probability calibration is one of these things that a lot of you guys have probably never heard about because it's not a central machine learning topic like hyperparameter tuning or train test splitting that everyone learns about. It's a very specific thing, but also a very useful thing. So the idea is the following. We have a lot of different kinds of models that we can train for classification. We have K nearest neighbors, logistic regression, random forests, uh, support vector machines, decision trees, and so on. And some of these models output not only the prediction class, but also probabilities for each class. So it will not just tell you it's class one, it will tell you class one has 85%, class two has 3%, and then the remaining percent, 12% is uh, class three, or something like this. So some models output a probability, and others don't. Others will just give you class one, class two, or class three as a prediction, because there are certain boundaries and so on, for example, in support vector machines. Uh, so models come to their conclusions differently. Now, the idea of probability calibration or of a calibrated classifier is that you add one layer on top of all that. So you train a second model to calibrate the probabilities. So in the case of a model that already outputs probabilities, this calibrated classifier fine tunes the probabilities to make them more accurate. In the case of a model like a support vector machine that does not output any probabilities at all, this calibrated classifier makes this model into a model that outputs probabilities, which can be very useful. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to just uh, install scikit-learn here. So just open up your command line pip or pip3 on Linux and Mac, install, and then scikit-learn. And once you have scikit-learn installed, we're going to import a couple of things here. We're going to say from sklearn.datasets, we're going to import the breast cancer data set. This is just a simple data set with a couple of features that predicts whether a tumor is malignant or benign. Um, then we have from sklearn, we're going to start with uh, logistic regression because logistic regression outputs a probability. So we're going to say import logistic regression. Then we're also going to import a scalar. So from pre-processing, we're going to import standard scalar. And we're also going to import from model selection, the train test split. Uh, because the important thing is, first of all, we're going to split our data into training and testing data so that we can evaluate the performance of the model. But we're then also going to split the training data into actual training data and into calibration data because we train, uh, train two different models and we train them on two different data sets. So uh, we have the imports here, then we're also going to import uh, for later on scikit-learn dot um, SVM linear support vector classifier. All right, so let us start by just loading the data data is going to be equal to load breast cancer, this will load a dictionary with all the information that we need. And we're going to say here x and y is going to be equal to data, data and data target. So we can print that to see what it looks like. Come on, print x, print y. And this is what we get, we get some features and we get zero or one, one for benign, I think and zero for malignant. All right. So now we're going to split this into training and test data. So x train x test, y train, y test, is going to be equal to train test split x and y with a test size of 20%. So 0 0.2. Um, and then what we're going to do now is we're going to just train a uh, logistic regression on the data. Uh, or actually, first of all, let's just split this into x train, train, uh, x, tr uh, x calib, then y train, <clears throat> train, and y calibration, train test split, x train, y train, again, with test size of 0 
All right. So now let's go ahead and say classifier is going to be equal to logistic regression. And let's just call CLF dot fit on X train train and Y train train. And then we can just print the performance CLF score on X test and Y test. Um, and you can see we get a warning here for the convergence doesn't really matter too much or actually we can say uh, no, we're going to do that for the uh, SVC. But um, oh, I think this is because we didn't scale the data. Let me just scale the data here. X scaled is going to be equal to scalar is going to be equal to standard scalar. And the scalar is going to fit transform x. And now we need x scaled. There you go, we get 97% accuracy, roughly. And what you will see here is that when we try to predict something with a classifier, we can do that with predict or with predict prop A, or even lock prop A. So with the probabilities, or with the prediction itself. So I can go ahead here and say, I want to predict x test instance zero. So the first one, and I can also call the predict probability function. And what you see is that here I get the class. So the output one that I'm predicting, and here I get the probability. So it says the probability that the output is one that the correct answer is one is 96% and 3% uh, that it's zero. This is what the output means. So what we can do now is we can calibrate this probability uh, to make it more accurate. And this is something that we can also do with models that don't have this at all. So for example, or actually, let's first of all, uh, calibrate it for the logistic regression, uh, we're going to say here, from sklearn dot calibration, we're going to import the calibrated classifier cross validation CV. Um, and then we're going to do the following, we're going to say, calib CLF is going to be equal to calibrated classifier. And as a parameter here, we're going to just pass the classifier. And we're going to say cross validation is threefold. So we're just going to do a threefold cross validation here. And then we're going to say calibrated classifier fit, and we're going to fit it on the calibration data. Like this. Um, and then we're going to say calibrated classifier score x test y test. And in this case, it actually turns out to be worse, but here it's now better. So it's not a guarantee that it will always be better. Sometimes it's not, not going to change at all. Um, sometimes it's going to be worse. But actually, the interesting use case, in my opinion, is not to just calibrate a classifier that already has probabilities, but to turn a classifier that just gives you the output into one that outputs probabilities. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to change this to linear SVC. We're going to do the same thing, we're going to evaluate it on x test, y test. And you can see we get 94. We get 96. We get 96. There you go. So this is our linear support vector classifier that we're training here. But this classifier doesn't have the method called predict prop a so I cannot just go ahead and say, predict prop a you can see the only method that I have here is predict. So all I can do is I can get a prediction for an instance, which is going to be zero in this case. Um, and one if I train it again, so it seems to not be super, uh, super accurate here, uh, at, at least with this one, let's maybe go with another one, five, it says one zero, okay, it seems to change its mind quite frequently. But it doesn't really matter. The, the important thing is we don't have a predict prop a function. And sometimes you need that for different uh, use cases, maybe you want to have uh, you want to display the top probabilities if this is a multi class problem. Uh, maybe you need it because for example, for the lime package, I'm going to make a video about lime here in a couple of days, uh, which is basically an explainability method, uh, you need to have a model that you can call the predict prop a function. Um, off and you cannot do that for a linear support vector classifier. So what you can do here is you can create again a calibrated classifier. 
Um, you can pass here the seal F from linear support vector classifier. CV is going to be three. And now we can say calibrated classifier fit X calibration, Y calibration. And uh, then we can score this here. Maybe it's going to be better, maybe not. In this case, it's a little bit worse. But I'm also working with a very small data set here. This is also important. But what we have here now, and this is important, what we have here now is I can call the calibrated CF predict probability function. So I don't just get the output, I don't just get predict, I also get the probabilities. And as I said, in this case, it's very insecure. Uh, this is also one reason why you might want to have this. Um, if the probabilities are not very obvious, if, if it's not very one sided, you might have a low confidence, which you cannot really see in an ordinary support vector classifier, because the support vector classifier just tells you it's one or zero. And here now we get a probability, we get a likelihood, we get a confidence. And as I said, for certain other packages or other methods, you need to have a model that can output probabilities. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.